Aaron Thomas was arrested and charged with two counts of... What's up, everyone? So today I have a reaction. It's a little bit different. It's a little bit uh, kind of on the edge. So if you get set off easily by hostile um, and aggressive behaviors, this may not be the one for you. But I will say that I think it's a very important talking point for adults and parents in this society. So let's get into it. This father is confronting a student who allegedly harassed his daughter. Yo, I was out of my door today. I didn't know how to do it. You're Watch as tensions escalate as the teen states he's done nothing wrong, and another student comes to his defense. I was out of my door. Now. She had pictures of me and my mom. I didn't know. 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 38-year-old Aaron Thomas stormed into a Paulsboro High School classroom after his daughter claimed a student was harassing her. Taking matters into his own hands, Thomas confronted the teen and demanded he apologize to his daughter. Thomas's attention then diverts to another student who leaps to the boy's defense. According to an affidavit of probable cause, the teenage girl was having problems with the student over photos that were shared in the classroom. As if things weren't already bad enough, the father makes matters worse by physically putting his hands on a student. Aaron Thomas was arrested and charged with two counts of third-degree terroristic threats, along with simple assault, trespassing, and disorderly conduct. So in my opinion, he was out of line. And I will get to the Facebook comment that I made, but I think his moral compass, I guess, was in the right place, wanting to defend his daughter. But the way he went about it, I disagree with. And this is the rub that I got from a few people on social media. So I'm gonna look at some of the notes going back on this. Um, he's 38 years old, which means he's at least... 20 years older than those children that he was approaching. That would mean those kids would have to have been their senior year and they were 18 years old just at the 20-year mark. So that means he's much older, wiser, stronger than a lot of those kids. Um, you know, the threatening to knock them out, slap fire on them if he has to come back. And then when he went back to the second child, he actually made contact. And that's a terrible place to put yourself in as an adult. Um, again, 
he's way out of line because for all of his hostility and the bullying and things that he was trying to protect his daughter from, he was doing to someone else's child. There's a there's a great irony to um, to his actions, but I still understand what he thought he was accomplishing. But he went about it all wrong in my in my estimation. The first kid, if we notice, he immediately denied doing anything. Um, so you can take that for what you want. Kids are sometimes they're good at you know bending the truth, and sometimes when you are put in the spot like that, the first thing you do is tell the truth because you don't have time to think of anything else. And I think we've all been on both sides of that coin, but I kind of tend to believe that that kid didn't really look like he had um, too much to try to hide with a grown man in his face demanding an apology and kind of being physically intimidating. Um, He claimed that the man's daughter had pictures of him and his family so what was the backstory to all of this? I don't feel like this is a completely one-sided affair. I could be way off and it's not to take away from what that young lady was feeling to have talked to her father about it, but clearly there's more to it. And that's what I wish the father would have gone in the room trying to demand was answers rather than demand apologies. So we have the second kid who came into the picture and was trying to defend the first kid And that led to the more aggressive side with the father because that boy got up and was like, what are you doing? You know, what's wrong with you trying to, you know, hit kids and things like that. And he wasn't wrong. I I definitely think that this kid was speaking a truth, but it was almost like another cup of gasoline on the fire because that grown man knew that there wasn't a student in that room that was going to be able to do anything to him physically. So for that young boy to say the things he said, he wasn't wrong, but it almost seemed like it was inciting more. Now, um, the kids, um, they kind of, at some point realized the guy wasn't going to do anything. And that's when I think he was starting to walk out and he would say, you know, if I have to come back, I'll slap you. And they were like, do it, do it now. You're walking away, you know, and they started It sounded like they started calling him names back too. And then that's when he came over and made contact with the second kid. The one thing that I was perplexed was there was another adult male in the room. And I can't tell if he was the one that just kept saying it's not worth it. It's not worth it. But at some point, what's the role of administrators, teachers, things of that of that nature, of that ilk? Even if you're just a janitor and you work at the school Is there a point where you're immediately, you know, sending another student, hey, run to the front office, get some help? Or do you at least place yourself between that man and the and these students? Or do we just say, well, you just kind of observe and, you know, take notes for the report later? I'm not sure how I would handle that myself, but it's a question that needs to be asked because if we're sending students to schools how how is their safety insured and i'm not talking about like school shooters and things like that i'm talking about if if a some if a certain cir- circumstance comes up like that then how does that play out for them um I mean, he tried to de-escalate the situation, but it seemed like it was unsuccessful. And I'm just glad that the father did not snap into a space where he actually did physically attack somebody. Um, That would have been much, much worse. Now, as we saw, the man was arrested and he was charged and things like that. But I think that this is warranted. I think that as as an adult uh, with your child there, um, you definitely could have handled that better. I understand everything about a father's heart for his daughter. I do. But you have to still be able to think these things logically. That was an emotional response. And our kids will make us do sometimes very emotional things, but we have to think logically before we get to it. Um, Let me get to the Facebook uh, posting that I put up because it gets interesting And I don't know if I have it on my phone. Um, I think I'll be able to pull it up. But I had a conversation with, um, with somebody on Facebook when it came to that. And my post, my, my initial post was his heart was in the right place, but he had definitely lost his mind and it got a bunch of thumbs up and stuff like that. Well, a gentleman jumped in and he said, no, he didn't lose his mind, his mind, it says his mind, but I'm guessing it says his mind 
was protect my child. And I responded, getting arrested for not controlling your actions makes the child more vulnerable. Again, his heart was in the right place, JMO, which means just my opinion. So he responds, just say you're not willing to risk it all for your family. And I replied, nice sign language. I use the acronym S-I-G-N language, be well. And he responds, what sign language did I use? And I did not respond because at that point, I'll get to why in just a moment. So let me go back over some of this stuff. Uh, I definitely think his his heart was in the right place, but he did not practice um, a lot of logical thinking with that. And I don't know if his daughter was crying, what story she was she had given him or what version, but he clearly came up with an agenda um, to basically threaten apologies out of people. I would be curious to see what would have happened if those kids would have just said, hey, it's it's all good, you know, whatever happened, we're sorry. Would he have calmed way down or if he or would he have doubled down and been like, yeah, don't make me come back here. So I'm curious to see how that would have played out as well. But okay, so I, I you know, the guy is saying he didn't lose his mind. I think that he did. Um, and then for him to say, just say you're not willing to risk it all for your family. So let's get into that part. Um, I think you risk more when it comes to that. If let's, this man gets arrested, does he have any other children that depend on him daily just to pick them up from school, um, to go to work and be able to pay for whatever lifestyle he can provide? Once you start getting into those sort of areas, now that daughter also potentially can feel guilty that her father got arrested because he went up there to, to to defend her. This doesn't this doesn't go in good places. Ego-wise, we think, yes, oh, I protected and you beat your chest and things like that. And I don't say that to mock anybody who would do the same, but you went into an area with other people's children to do and prevent exactly what you felt and you he did exactly what he was trying to not have happen to his daughter and it was worse because he was a grown man threatening with physical behavior i don't we don't even know what those boys were accused of bullying like in what capacity were they saying things about her body were they just saying that she stank were they saying racial things were they just saying you know you're not smart we don't even know what that was so it's very um misleading in a lot of ways that he just went up there to save the day we don't even know what was said and if she's super sensitive maybe there's just the possibility one thing was said we don't know but the fact that it came out about pictures and i now that i think about it it sounds like it had something to do with pictures but it sounded like she had pictures too so boy if this is social media is this not a lesson for us all to be careful with our children and um, what we're teaching them to post or take possession of um, so for him to say, just say, you're not willing to risk it all. That's not it. I think, but we risk in different ways and I'm willing to risk it by going through the, the, the legislative system, which is to go to the school, which is go to the superintendent, like exhaust all your resources in my estimation, before you pop up in a Charles Bronson way. Now, if that if that daughter had been attacked or something else, the police immediately get involved. And I get it. This is not a popular sentiment, but he got arrested. He got arrested. So the end of the police that he should have been, you know, utilizing, he ended up on the other end of it because he took matters into his own hands. And we still live in a society where this sort of stuff matters. So um, when I said nice sign language, S I G N. Sign language and the late great Kevin Samuels gave us gave this to us, which means shame, insults, guilt, and the need to be right. Anytime somebody starts to condescend or attack or use profanity aimed at you or taking shots, they're now speaking sign language, which means they had a short lived argument, which means that they're not able to respectfully disagree in a healthy manner and have that sort of you know, 
yeah, I see it your way, but you know, an exchange of philosophy rather than just lobbing insults. But there again is the rub because that's part of social media. People are extremely comfortable with saying things through a camera or typing and texting to somebody that they're not face to face with. Now, I'm not saying that this person would not have said that or disagreed with me in the moment in real time, but I definitely think that we just have a difference of opinion and we acted out in a differing manner depending whether it's very personal like in front of each other or whether you are wherever this person is at in the in the in the internet and just being able to type whatever they want now it was it highly insulting what he said no and could i have put a different response sure but i i I'm comfortable with my with my response because I've come across way too many people when you post enough you get enough and you see a sample sizing of people who are willing to just jump to well you know you're not you're not brave you're not a father you're not a man basically is saying you're not willing to risk it all well no I'm not willing to risk not being in my children's lives on a daily basis or as they need me because I chose to do something that was illogical or based more on emotions than than a thought out plan of action. No, I'm not willing to do that. I'm not willing to lose my job, potentially lose my house, be behind on bills, have to pay the court system and still be incarcerated, which means a loss of my freedom. That's risking a lot more than just being able to walk up to the school and say, hey, guys, can we talk? It sounded basically the way that teacher was not in, in her, uh, intervening that it sounds like if you would have just walked in and had that conversation, they would have definitely been like, Hey guys, you know, let, let the man talk or whatever. It seemed like that because he wasn't intervening on the, uh, on another level. So if that man would have walked in way calmer, I think that would have been um, probably his best bet. Now I will back this up with a little uh, backstory. Do I want to make it gray? So it's like a black and white. So it's like old timey, like it's a memory. Uh, my oldest daughter, she was getting bullied at her after school program. And this was hard bullying. This was these two girls had a mother who was basically taking attacking shots at um, at at my daughter. And they had come back to school one of the days and said basically that, well, my mom said that she would come up with some of her some of our uncles and have a talk with your mom. Well, talk with your mom means that they were going to try to instigate something to the point of violence. And why a woman would need to bring other men to just to talk to a woman clearly spoke volumes. And that's when I got involved. And that's when I went through I went through the school, we went through the schools, we talked to teachers, we talked to everybody. The after school program was supposed to be documenting every time something happened and that man who was running the system did not. So I showed up one day. And I walked in and I said, can I talk to you outside? That's kind of where this man could have gone, but I understand it's different because he wasn't going to be able to pull someone else's children outside. But if he would have asked the teacher, can we have a moment or something to that effect? But when I got that man outside, I was in full throat. And I don't mean I was yelling uncontrollably at him, but it was clear enough with enough volume to send a message to the kids that were bullying, but I never said a word to those kids. But I let it be known that displeasure was known. We went on to talk to the city of Glendale and the the um, the people who had set up the after school program. We talked to their director. We talked to everybody along the lines, but... We did it the right way, but when the moment of push come to shove had to be had to be done, then I, t- I took that action and I stand on that action. So this is why I say I feel what that man was going through, but I would have never gone in and threatened children. I would have never gone in and and taken the action that he did. So shout out to a loving father. Clearly he loves his daughter to to go and do that. But sir it wasn't it wasn't the right plan of action executed that's all i can say about that what are your thoughts what are you guys' thoughts on this what if it was your child and based off of just what we know let's not escalate it into 
um, something like child abduction or, you know, really inappropriate behavior. Let's not diminish it down to, well, kids just need to be tougher. Let's just take what we've seen, what we know, and what it seems to be is some pictures that may or may not have been on social media. But let's just take it at that. If it was your child, how would you address this? Am, am I way out of line? Am I way too soft? Maybe I'm way too soft and people should just jump straight into action and do what this man did every time. I'm just not of that mind. Um, but if you are, leave in the comments as as to why. Maybe because the, is the school system failing where they're not protecting our children? And if that's the case, then what's the solution so parents don't have to come up, address children, and get themselves arrested? What is the solution then, rather than just blaming it on the schools and saying they're not doing enough to protect? So give me your thoughts. Um, and just on that note, the ability to protect each other's children also comes in how we raise our children because we send these children out into the world. So teaching our children about boundaries, respect for one another across all, all boards, is it, it's an important thing. And also teaching uh, as much as we can learn about social media because even we're older and this is hitting children at a rate that they're not understanding but it's still their world, but we need to know it because we're still guiding them and raising them. So again, I'd love to hear your thoughts. What's your ace up the sleeve, advice, comment, experience, leave it in the comments. And as always, thumbs up or thumbs down. I won't be mad at you, but leave something in the comments. Let's have some commentary, ask some questions or whatever else. Um, you can ask about my situation and wh how I, you know, anything about that, what else happened as a result of it or whatever else. Um, and leave your own experiences. I, I, if you're a parent, you had to have it on some level where you felt that, that blood rising because that four-year-old pushed your four-year-old down at the park, you know, trying to play with the swings or things like that. It's happened to us. But did we act on it? Most of the time, no, or you would hope not. And if nothing else, I would say this man would have been much better suited to have talked to those children's parents. I know it's a lot of legwork and a lot of stuff to do, so he took the easiest course. Um, but it also turned out to be a massive detour because he then got himself arrested and is going to have to deal with things in other ways, financially, emotionally, and really just addressing his daughter. So... Subscriptions are free to the channel. Would love to have you. And please feel free to share it with your friends and family as well um, so they can chip in as well and be a contributor and help this channel and this platform grow. We'd love to have it. So in the meantime, I hope this finds everybody in a place, pursuit, or beginnings of total health, mind, body, and soul. We'll see you soon. Peace, love, unity, solidarity.